Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be going over to the Uvatsim universe once more and we're going to be seeing how you can request a landing at an airport that you didn't necessarily uh, go ahead and dial in your direct route to. Uh, what I mean by this is that typically when we're flying a VATSIM, we're using like flight following or we're using some kind of IFR rules. But today we're going to be on VFR, but we're going to be making our way into an airport that is currently going to have a tower. Now you're saying, well, okay, what's the, what, 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 what? Let me show you. So um, what we have today is a pretty classic situation here, well, because uh, we have a beautiful, beautiful, not really day. And I noticed that uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to fly up to uh, Hartford, Connecticut here. Uh, currently, we're sitting way down here. This is us right there in uh, Westerly. You can see Bradley's up here. We're actually flying up to Hartford. And I noticed that this whole zone is controlled by actually two separate controllers. Uh, you have this chap up here. This is a Boston Center. But we also have this tighter little guy down here. This is a uh, Yankee 90. And we also have this one, Alpha 90. So Bradley Approach is kind of going to own this side of the thing. So we're going to end up talking to them today. If we wanted to, of course, so we could call up our whole Boston Center and get permission to go, but we don't need to. Now, in the ideal world, uh, they'd actually have a separate tower at Hartford that we could basically call and land normally. Uh, that's something I've done in the real world plenty of times. So it's always kind of fun to uh, see it in the virtual world. But like I said, today we're going to end up having to talk to these folks. Their frequency is, uh, let's go ahead and zoom out just a teeny tiny bit. Yankee 90 is going to be 1323950. That's a weird frequency for them but whatever works right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to preload everything first so my first one i'm going to do is a one two two eight zero because uh, that's where we're going to need to uh, go ahead and communicate with everybody around us that's kind of the uh, unicom if you want and then that other frequency of course so let's take a look here uh, i'll just hold my mouse one more time uh, it looks like 235 of course you can't see what i'm showing so go ahead and share this with you again real fast so you can hold my mouse right here and you can see it is one two three nine five zero so we're going to come back over here, go ahead and get that all set, one, two, three, and we're going to set this one, two, nine, five, zero. I really don't need this super accurate radio, folks. All right, so this is the one we're going to need when we get closer. This is going to be the one that we're going to use to kind of get us off the ground here down in Westerly. Now, an interesting thing is that the weather forecast in the real world says that the cloud level is supposed to be at 10,000 feet. Uh, thanks to Microsoft's uh, brilliance, though, you can see that things are a little worse <laughs> than they actually are in the real world, which I swear that never happens, but we'll make do with what we have here. All right, let's go ahead and do it. So the, uh, this is a uh, non-controlled zone. So basically what we can do is uh, just hit the classic gas and I'm just kind of making our way right out of it. We don't have to do any direct calls or anything along those lines until we get a little bit closer. Now, if you're curious about our little flight path here, I'll go ahead and share that with you super quick. All right, now it's gonna look a little bit like this. I actually need to be able to see where I'm going here. Uh, one of the reasons I've chosen this flight is it does not bring us to anybody else's airspace today. So that means when we take off, we can just go straight over there, call on our landing when we get within about 20 miles of Hartford, and then we should be able to plop this thing on the ground like any split. Now, the conditions in Hartford are good enough so that um, I'm not too, too concerned with having a situation where I get there and it's like via IFR and we have to request an IFR flight plan, but you never know. Like I said, right now, those clouds are supposed to be 10,000 feet above our heads, and right now, they're looking like they're about ground level, maybe 500 feet above. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slow my plane down before I get to Foxtrot here. Oh, that's the uh, name of this uh, taxiway that I'm sneaking up on real closely because we're leaving the non-controlled area and uh, basically have to let everybody know we're here. Westerly is just a regular good old-fashioned uh, public airport. There's nothing special about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a left. Uh, we're going to cross over this runway 725. Then we're going to take a second left and we're going to take our way all the way to runway 7. You can see that that... <laughs> you can see very clearly that the uh, wind is quite a bit variable here and it's actually kind of interesting because we're getting, again, the classic flight sim disagreeing with what uh, in this case four flight is uh, telling me right now but hey we're gonna make the best of what we got let's go ahead and cross that runway and announce it real quick westerly traffic oops sorry right, helps when you push the right button right westerly traffic red six fours on foxtrot crossing runway seven into alpha westerly just letting everybody know real quick what we're doing just in case anybody else happens to be in the neighborhood or something we're taking the 182 out today because i know if we do encounter any ifr conditions uh, things are going to be a little bit of a bumpy side so i wanted an airplane that i knew i could trust as far as uh, being a little bit more tolerant to the bumps so we're crossing 725 that was very naughty because i did not look well when i crossed that's uh, really really sloppy on my part especially since it is an uncontrolled airport uh, do as i say not as i do all right let's go ahead and swing this thing around or make our way down alpha so what we're going to do is we're going to get all the way down to uh, runway 7. I'm going to go ahead and stick my aileron down, my elevator down here. If you're wondering why I'm doing that, it's because we have a fairly strong tailwind that's going to have a tendency to do naughty things to the plane. So what we like to do is either hold it neutral or the classic expression is to dive away from the wind uh, while we're navigating here. If I pull that throttle back, we don't need to be going nearly that fast. One thing I would like to do while I'm kind of cruising along here is I like to go ahead and get my automatic pilot set up. And it's automatically pilot set up. <laughs> this one's a little less fancy than the one in the typical G1000, but hey, I think it works great. 
I've got to start slowing down here. I'm going to start getting some lift. Uh, somewhere out there, there's a flight instructor screaming at the monitor. One of the fun things, too, is I remember uh, coming down a hill one time on an airport because the airport wasn't terribly level. And I started going down this hill, I started going down this hill, and I tapped the brakes just to slow down. And it just didn't slow down right away. And it scared the absolute bejesus out of me. Me thinking, oh my God, something terrible is going to happen here. So where I'm looking up there, I don't see anybody on the approach. Uh, what we need to do is go ahead and flip on our transponder before we go popping on here. Obviously, we want to make sure we're properly lit up. Just got the approaching runway 7 warning here. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure everything's on. Ah, I hate it when I do that. Boop, boop. Make sure everybody can see us. It's also low visibility, so we're going to light up like a Christmas tree here. We're going to go down to our transponder and make sure everybody knows we're here. We're going to stick to 1200 until they give us something different. Uh, speaking of something different, I'm going to go ahead and get myself my little notepad and my pen, and I'm going to put it over on my leg here so that I uh, make sure I have it in case uh, they give me something interesting of an instruction here. So let's go ahead and make the call, and I'll pop onto the runway. Westerly traffic, red 64, taking off runway 7 westerly. That's all I got to do, and let's go ahead and do it. This aircraft likes one notch of flaps during takeoff, so I just popped in my first notch of flaps, and now I'm popping onto the runway. <laughs> just got my approaching runway 7, entering runway 7, 3,900 feet remaining. <laughs> Four flight is an interesting toy. And I make my way over here. I know I just defended the other half of flight instructors too. Let's go ahead and give this thing full throttle. And enjoy the wind. Go ahead and I'd set my controls into the wind a little bit there. I don't need to do too much. This is a 182. Lift that nose up, a little bit of right foot. And we are airborne. I'm gonna come to the right just a tiny bit. I can already feel this thing drifting on me. And that's about it. We're just gonna start making our way towards our, our direction. Not going to touch anything else on this aircraft until we get a little bit of altitude underneath us, but it will go ahead and get rid of the flaps because that's just excess drag at this time. So I left just a tiny bit. What's most likely going to happen to us is we're going to encounter a big nasty cloud on our way upwards here. Um, that cloud, like I said, in the real world does not actually exist, uh, so I'm not 100% sure kind of how I should feel about that one way or the other. At this time, though, I'm just going to pretend that it's not there because it isn't really there in the real world. So if I don't believe in it, it doesn't exist, right? No, you should definitely file for IFR, which means I'm just going to stay a little low. Let's go ahead and double check to see what my weather settings are. And what we'll do is, well, it says live weather, but oh my gosh. I'm going to go ahead and clean that up a little bit. Actually, you know what I'll do even better? I'll go ahead and tweak it so that the wind or the weather is actually what I see. Let's go ahead and crank up the coverage. We'll increase the density. Uh, we're going to make it uh, increase its altitude. There we go. And we'll put this right at the bottom out. Okay, that's fine for me. So right now, the uh, minimum right here, according to the METAR, should be 10,000 feet. I'll put 8,000 feet in here, and that should be fine. So it looks a little bit more like it is in the real world. All right, we are on our way once again. So this aircraft cruise climbs at uh, 25 inches. Uh, you can also use full power for our climb here. I'm going to go ahead and immediately start slowing the climb down a little bit here. We do not need to be using full power for this climb. We're going to be up to our altitude of 2,500 very quickly. Another one of those fun uh, Microsoft things. You got to love the fact that that's a curved line. That should be fairly straight. It's just making me crazy. I don't know. I'm just one of these days. I'm just not patient. You know how it goes. All right. So now we're going to have to go ahead and get ready to land. I know you're sitting here going, um, we just took off. Uh, why would we be getting ready for land? Well, if you remember, this is a relatively short flight. You know, I'm looking over on my little thing here. I've got 43 nautical miles to go. We do 140 knots in this aircraft. Uh, if you do the division on that one real quick, you realize it's not going to take us any time at all to get to our destination. But since I'm a nice video editor, I will skip the middle part of the trip to right about the point when we're going to go ahead and make the call over to Hartford. Uh, when are we going to make the call into Hartford? Well, if you take a look really, really carefully at our little sectional chart, let me go ahead and open that sucker back up so everybody can see it again. There we go. Whoop, hold on. Too many things at once. Too many things at once. Fly the plane. Fly the plane. Go ahead and get to our altitude here. That looks good right there. Go ahead and give ourselves a couple blasts of trim. Go flip on the automatic pilot. We're going to go ahead and select altitude mode as well. Boop. Altitude mode hold. We're going to select nav hold. Now we're going to go get out the map. Let's go ahead and pull this back a little bit. Just kind of reduce it to about 2200 RPM. Again, just to make it a little bit less noise on our ears. Back down to 25 inches, and we're good to go. All right, now we'll go get the chart back out. Okay, so here's how this works. If you look really, really carefully, there's this giant box that says, contact Yankee Approach within 20 nautical miles on this particular frequency for where we're traveling to today. So if taking a look at this big thing, this giant box, remember, we're not going to this giant box, but this giant box is 20 nautical miles wide. So you're sitting there going, well, does that affect us? Yeah, it kind of does. Because if this is 10, if you want to imagine this distance, if I do that distance exactly one more time, that puts us right about on this curve right here. Meaning, theoretically, we want to be contacting them within that distance when we cross here. But realistically, I'm probably going to call them when I'm 25 nautical miles out to Hartford. Actually, I'm sorry, 25 out to them. 
which is going to be probably right around this little intersection between the two highways. And what I'll do is I'll pretend they're Hartford approach and then have them basically send me down onto the ground here. Now Hartford, of course, if you look at the weather, is um, a few clouds at 6,000, overcast at 20,000. So their clouds are actually a little bit lower than ours right now, but I'm not gonna worry about that too, too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go ahead and skip trip and I'll catch you folks so when we get a little tiny bit closer to our destination. All right, we're starting to get close. We've got about two nautical miles before we're gonna have to make the call. I worked that out. It comes out to be about 15 nautical miles, so we've got a call done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and swap, whoop, wrong radio. I'm gonna go ahead and swap this one, swap, so that we can get ready to go ahead and talk to those good folks over at Bradley Approach, Yankee Approach, I should say. The other thing I wanna do too while I'm flying along here is I wanna go double check the ATIS. I've loaded it up into 126.45 already. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and bop this button and take a listen. Oh, I just received the message. Three nine five zero. Okay. Ah, look at that. I was right. They called me. That's so cool. All right, we better give them a call. Yankee, Yankee approach red six four. Red at sixty four. Bradley approach. Uh, I understand you're going to Hartford. Say attention. Our intention is to land at Hartford. Full stop. Red sixty four. Roger. Make straight in runway two straight in runway two red six four so in this case um he kind of got ahead of us uh, normally what i would have done is i would have called uh, hartford approach and said you know request landing and uh, basically he called us back requested our intentions because he was very much on top of his stuff and he's a solid controller there uh, unfortunately like i said uh, we didn't get to make the whole request there because he knew that we were right about to cross that line so notice that he and i basically crossed that line at exactly the same time now if you're wondering how do we know <laughs> Let me go ahead and share this with you real quick. You can actually see the progress of my plane, how I just was about to sneak into his little zone here, and he immediately popped on. Uh, the interesting thing, like I said, normally in the real world, when we got within about 50 nautical miles, you call up Hartford Tower and say, you know, Hartford Tower, you know, so this, you know Red 6-4 is 15 to the southeast, requesting full stop, and then they call you back. Uh, the other thing we need to check, too, is our ATIS, uh, which we're going to do anyway, so why not? Juliet would have been the code. So the normal call for that would be Bradley, or sorry, Brainerd Tower, Red 6-4 is 15 to the southeast, 2,500 to Good south. day, November 8, Charlie Lima is direct Bridgeport at 10,000. November 8, Charlie Lima, Bradley approach. Good afternoon, the Bradley altimeter 2977, expect vectors, ILS runway 6 approach. All right, 2977, we'll expect the ILS 6, hey Charlie Lima. Yeah, so the wind today is uh, coming kind of out of the north northeasterly, which is mind-boggling because uh, typically in this area on a normal day, if you want to call something normal, uh, your wind is generally going to be coming out of the mostly west, sometimes slightly southwest, depending on the situation. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be crossing a Hartford VOR, which is uh, going to be this little sucker. Just a bizarre coincidence that we could have used it to get all the way down to the ground today. You said make straight in for two. Uh, so let's zoom out and take a look at well, what straight in for two is going to look like. And I noticed that our lovely friends over Microsoft did a wonderful job simulating my straight in for two. <laughs> oh, sigh. That, that, I, 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 I don't know what to say. Thank you, Microsoft. That was actually pretty cool. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, pause here, and I'll sneak us up right as we approach to land, and then I'll go ahead and make my request for taxi to get there. Sure. There's the VOR. I just thought I'd show everybody because it's kind of cool. Bravo Delta Romeo 25 at runway 2. You're clear to land. Runway 2, clear to land. Red 6 4 next one. All right, now we've just been approved the AOK -okay to go ahead and put the sucker down on the ground. Like I said, Microsoft's doing a really nice job of kind of bringing us around kind of far, and it's going to line us up real well with uh, Runway 2 there. So, uh, haters going to hate and all, but I don't, I, I, I don't mind the fact that it did that. That's kind of neat, actually. All right, so we're going to go and swing around. I'll land the sucker, make our call, and call it a day. All right, time to put this thing on the ground. And I notice that the weather finally caught up to us. Uh, that is the correct ceiling. Uh, we were looking at something quite a bit lower than uh, we were seeing a few minutes ago. Let's go ahead and pop this thing on the ground. Uh, just a few moments ago, we were cleared to land. It's just a matter of popping this thing down. And then we'll go ahead, like I said, make a call. We'll call it a video. 
in the future. Like I said, if this were a slightly different situation and he wasn't on top of getting us connected right away, what we would have done is we would have called something like Rainer Tower Red 64 is going, you know, 15 miles to the southeast, uh, request full stop with information to Juliet, and then they would give us the same instructions that we received just a few minutes ago. Uh, one of the neat things about VATSIM, though, is they basically require you to file a flight plan everywhere you go. So I did file a flight plan going into Hartford a little bit earlier. So one of the things is that he kind of knew that it was coming and he knew that it would have to put this thing on the ground probably here at the beginning with so that probably simplified things a little bit but again it's all about you know kind of working with the network the way you have it and kind of planning things carefully one thing i do recommend though is for you folks who are still kind of new to all these things i really really like to try to fly to airports that aren't main airports like you can see right off there in the distance i'll zoom in see the little lines uh right there that's basically Bradley's airport right there. So the reason that we went into this nice little one to the south is we don't have to worry about dealing with all the crazy chaotic traffic. I was just listening in a moment ago, they've got two or three jets coming down right now. So that's gonna make things a little bit fun for them. But again, this is just a great way to get experience with VATSIM without having to freak out too, too much. And honestly, I enjoy it. I really, really do enjoy it. It makes me think of flying in the real world. All right, let's put this thing on the ground. A Cessna 182 is a great plane. It has a very, very, I don't know. I still find it kind of a weird landing characteristic that I'm still kind of getting the hang of, but it's not too bad of a plane. Oh man, I never get approaches that go this long and this straight. This is so weird. They're just always out of a traffic pattern. Slow down a little bit. Let's start bringing the power back a little bit here. We got a little bit of extra energy. And you pull the throttle back, this thing stops flying. So I like to pull it back most of the ways. So the plane starts getting real heavy when you do that. Lift that nose up. And we're just going to wait for the kajunk. Delightful. What a nice plane. I love this thing. All right, let's go ahead and turn off our landing lights before we affect anybody here. I'm going to go uh, zoom way, way in. What are we going to end up on? It looks like we're going to end up in Charlie today. All right, go ahead and start slowing us down. And that's Charlie right on my left. Whoa! <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead and uh, correct my little boo-boo there. That was um, my right brake locking up. Charlie Lima, turn right heading zero three zero. We died. Mark down three thousand, right heading zero three zero. Citation to Charlie Lima. So now the interesting thing is he doesn't have quite the resolution we do as far as where we are on the ground. And, uh, November to 8, Charlie Lima, speed is your discretion. All right, speed our discretion and down to, you said 3,000 on the altitude. And what was the uh, heading? I'm to make sure I'm out of the room right here. Uh, speed your discretion, turn right heading 030, descend to 18, 3,000. All right, 030, then 3,000. Hey, Charlie Lima. Approach Red 64 is then Charlie requesting taxi to the jet center. Red 64, welcome to Hartford Taxi, the ramp your discretion, cross the runway. Cross the runway, taxi at my discretion, Red 64, thanks for your help. Sweet. So he basically just said go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a right on Alpha, which is right here on my right. And we'll just make our way down to the hotel, which is down that left. All right, folks, so uh, hopefully this video is helpful. Again, uh, like you can see, that sims, it's not that bad. Uh, general aviation uh, really has a good experience here because you're not going to be stressed out with constantly making the right turns and the left turns and the right turns and the left turns and things going absolutely crazy on you. It's just a matter of just kind of going and enjoying your navigation, enjoying your flight and getting that little piece down there at the end. But other than that, enjoy.